hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and if this is your first time stopping by you are so so welcome thank you very much for watching this video and please hit the subscribe button subscribe share this video with your friends and don't forget the notification button so that you get every single upload from me okay so today i'm going to be sharing my experience with you guys what i went through in lebanon it was complete hell it's a horror story people like one of the worst experiences I ever had in my life so it all started in 2014 I left school and I did not go to the university that year I left high school in 2013 up to 2014 I did not go to the university so I was home idling and a friend of mine came to me and told me about the opportunity to go to Lebanon and work I was like whoa and the salary was like 100,000 francs I was like this was awesome so I went to the agency the agent told me I had to bring the sum of 150,000 for a passport and I foolishly gave him the money and uh, after three weeks I got my passport and in less than two days I had a visa like in less than two days you know when they are doing this child trafficking thing they make sure they do it swift in such a way you will not have the time to think twice or maybe change your mind they do it so fast so that you know you just go and maybe realize yourself over there so in less than two days i got a visa and the following day i got a flight ticket it was so swift i did not know what was going on but like it was the quickest thing i've ever seen so my family escorted me to douala and boom i traveled and it all started in the airport there in lebanon like our passports were confiscated from us we were like 300 in numbers there were girls from other countries like Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, and the majority was from Ethiopia. So we were like 300 in number. So we were taken to one single room there in the airport, and we had like four benches to sit on. Um, we could not sit on the benches, like we had just four of them. So we ended up sitting on the floor for hours. We arrived like 4 a.m., and our buses ended up picking up us in the airport at let's say 1 p.m 2 p.m and it was yeah with all the hunger people were hungry and we had nothing to do like we were helpless so um mine came and picked me up at one so we went home and uh, guys i did not even get into the house like just at the door this dislocated my luggage is like they started searching through every single thing I had like they were searching my pockets my pants my bra like everything they had to search through everything and I don't know if they were thinking I brought the bomb or something to kill them or something I don't know so they had to search through everything and after that I was taken inside and I was asked to wash everything I brought you know they feel like we Africans are very dirty people or what I don't know so I was asked to wash everything I brought in order to kill any bacteria or germs I might have brought from Africa I don't know so I was asked to wash everything and I washed everything from A to Z so that wasn't it I was given rules and regulations I wasn't allowed to wear any of my clothes can you imagine like I was not allowed to wear any of my clothes and I was not allowed to use a cell phone yeah oh can you imagine that you are going to stay for three years without a phone like you are not even allowed to call your family members nothing i was like okay i'm already here what can i do i just have to follow the rules so they brought me these uniforms these uh, working uniforms what i had to wear on daily basis to work like i had to wear just these uniforms and maybe a pyjama in the night to sleep so i was that call and i was doing the work it wasn't easy like the house was super large it was a very large house with uncountable rooms and toilets large parlors large balconies large everything was super large it was a villa i don't know like it was so big and i was to clean this home every single day me growing up i used to work a lot in the farm and i never had a single crack on my hand nor my foot but in this house i ended up having cracks all over my hand all over my leg like 
because I was always touching water. My feet were always in water. So I ended up with so many cracks. And these cracks were so painful. Like each time you trample, like each time you walk on water or you do anything with water, you feel a lot of pains with your hands and your feet. And it wasn't an easy experience though. So I endured for six months. I was there crying day and night. I never had a phone. Like you could not even call your family to tell them what was going on. They were they were like, what happened to our daughter? They they never knew anything was. They never knew what was going on with me. So I was just there. Some of them thought I was dead or something. I don't know. So I was there for six months. And after six months, you know, when I first of all got there, they were like, we are not going to pay your salary. We are not going to be paying your salary every month. We'll be paying you after six months. So I accepted. So after six months, they paid. I was like, I wanted a cell phone. Like I wanted a cell phone. If I don't get a phone, I was not going to. So I told them if I don't get a phone, I was not going to work for them. So I had to leave like la 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 la. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I don't know what's happening to me. Okay. So they accepted. Because I told them I was going to leave though, like I had to hang like on their neck. I told them I was going to leave, that if I don't get a phone, I'm going to leave. And besides, I was the one, I, I had to buy the phone myself, it's not like they were going to buy it for me. So finally, in two weeks, I got a phone and this phone had conditions. I bought the phone myself and I was recharging the phone. Like the condition of this phone was... I was not allowed to use Wi-Fi and I was allowed to use this phone two hours per day. I, who does that? I bought the phone and guess what? I'm I'm the one recharging this phone and they were like, I'm supposed to use it two hours per day. I was like, anyways, I don't really need it because I'm always working. And for these two hours, you will not be able to use the phone because you are always on air and they are always calling for you, asking you to do coffee, asking you to do salads, asking you to do this. So within the two hours you not even have the time and when two hours two hours expires they are like give us the phone i was like oh my god these people are the meanest i've ever seen so i accepted <laughs> i had nobody to help me so i had to accept and can you imagine how arrogant their children can be there were times i we asked to clean the whole house and let's say you were cleaning in one of the rooms and you mistakenly misplace some of the items let's say you you change the position you know a girl of 13 she will be like hey christy when next you are cleaning my room you have to mind the way you place my stuffs like you have to put them in the same position and she will call you to her room like you have to follow her and rearrange everything yeah it was that bad i after all the tiredness after everything you've been going through you have to deal with them you have to deal with them so i was enduring in my at the back of my mind i was like i'm fighting for my future i can endure so and mind you if you are cleaning and if anything gets broken you are going to pay for it like they are going to deduct it from your salary so one day I was cleaning in one of their large salons. She was like, be very careful with these items because your salary in three years cannot buy any. So if you break them, guess what? You will stay here all your life working for it. I was like, wow. Can you imagine? Wow. So I stayed there for the next six months. They paid me for the first six months. So the following six months, like I started asking for my salary. They were like, we were going to pay you when you are going to your country. So you are going to stay here for the next three years without any salary. And when you are off to your country, that's when we are going to pay you. I was like, I have a lot of family issues. I have family problems that I need to solve. So I need this money, like right now. I need this money to send to my family. And if you guys are not going to give me this money, then tell me out i'm not working for you guys i am not going to work i told my family about it they were like don't work for them if they don't want to pay you the money then you don't have to work just stay just stay quiet don't talk to them don't do anything for them until you are paid your six month salary and my salary was 200 dollars per month and and times six that's one thousand two hundred dollars 
roughly 700,000 francs and they were playing around with this money so they were like they were to pay me after three years when I'm going home just imagine living with these people for three good years and it's finally time to go home and they are like they are not giving you any money what will you do like what I was facing it was six months like six good months of hard work I mean hard work so I told them I wasn't going to do it I told my family about it they were like don't do it just stay don't talk to them don't walk just stay quiet and wait for them if they cannot pay then come back home so my boss came back from work he was upset he came to my room shouting he was like why don't you want to work i'm like why don't you want to pay my money he was like oh are you trying to challenge me in my own house i'm like i'm here for the money i'm working for the money so if you don't want to pay me the money then <laughs> i'm not going to work either i know it's your house you you have all the right and everything but i'm here for the money if i don't get the money then you don't expect me to work he was like i'm going to hit you i'm like okay I'm here hit me go on and hit me and he started kicking me on the leg like he started kicking me trying to threaten me like he was going to shoot me with a gun like he was trying to scare me so he was like I'm nothing I'm an African slave and he can use his gun on me and me my country and my embassy we have nothing to do with him like we can't measure up you know like he can do whatever he wants to do with me and i will have nothing my family my country my embassy can do nothing to him i was like okay but as a matter of fact i'm not going to work and i told him that god knows i worked so hard for the money i never thought anything up anything bad about their family i was working with a clean heart and god knows i deserve the money if he doesn't want to give me the money god is going to judge him he was like he was like which god are you talking of you are luck and you are a slave like you are an african you are a slave i don't know the god you are talking of because god was white with blue eyes god knows people like me with white skin not blacks like you i was like how can somebody possibly say this I've been in this man's house for a year, working like a slave, serving them, and just listening to what he said to me. That I don't deserve to pray because God is white. God is not black like me. So he doesn't understand why I even pray because God is not for people like me. I was like, wow, wow. Like that was the meanest thing I've ever heard in my life. So at that moment, I was like, I was not going to work for them. No matter what even if i was giving the money i wasn't going to work for them so i stayed in my room for two three days no food nothing waiting for my flight ticket and finally i don't know what the agency over there in lebanon did with the cameroon embassy because i laid a complaint so they got me a ticket and mind you they did not pay my six month salary and i went to cameroon with nothing with nothing so it was a very painful experience for me and uh, i'll be advising every young man every young woman out there like when you are moving to the middle is be very careful you should know of what you are going to do because first when i was leaving from camera i did not even know that was what i was going to do like you know they kept sugarcoating everything telling me it was going to be fun like you know traveling abroad should be one of the best things so that's what they kept telling me i never knew it was going to be this bad so please before you travel to any country make sure you know what you are going to do there should be somebody over there telling you how it is you should be sure because if you are not sure then you will get into the shock of your life like traveling out isn't bad but just be careful where you are going to because so back then i used to have this book with me and i would write every single thing i was going through you guys can see the pages are falling off already because it's really really old i was writing everything in this book everything i went through i used to write it down like, i'm so happy i did i'm going to show you guys some of the notes to actually prove to you guys that i'm telling the truth i'm not making this up like i actually went through this okay it's not a good it was not a good experience but anyways i'm so happy i came out a better person and i'm stronger i will not advise anybody to go over there because of money or whatever so if you are traveling abroad 
make sure you know where you're going to make sure you know what you are going to do because you are going to get the shock of your life you know we keep getting the names of these countries and we think they are very important countries they are not so at times you are better off in your country than all these dirty countries so make sure you know every single detail about anywhere you're going to before you leave because you might end up in the same pot of soup like me so at this point i'll have to end the video please 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 like comment and share what are your thoughts and thank you thank you very much for watching and i'll have to say bye bye until next time bye